Hello, Jamie here from Printed Encounter, coming at you with a short instructional video on how to use the GLB files that I've uploaded here on the Patreon drive. Um, basically what this is, is a set of files, 3D files, that have uh, separated objects that let you pick and choose what you want to include in the final STL file. Uh, so to give some context, this is for the skeleton bowman that I uploaded yesterday. Um, you know, the reason I came up with this is because when I was making these models, uh, these ones here, there was, you know, some variety within the sort of headwear, right? Some had, I made a helmet, a hood, and just like a regular uh, collar here. And, you know, I wanted some way to give you the opportunity to sort of pick and choose what you want to include. And this sort of led me down a rabbit hole of, you know, making everything sort of a little bit more customizable. So to save me the work of, you know, exporting hundreds of variations of STL files uh, with minute differences, I wanted to come up with a way to let you easily choose uh, what you want to include and what you don't want to include in the final STL file. Now this one is going to be very basic because, you know, they're essentially just the same mini in different poses with the same items. But this could be later used to create stuff, um, you know, with different weapon variations and maybe different sort of, you know, bases or, or whatever the case may be um, that sort of give you the opportunity to have more variety without having to, you know, print out little bits and physically kit bash them so you can sort of digitally modify. So yeah, let me just quickly run through how to use this. So once you've downloaded these files, um, you can open them with 3D Builder. Now, if you don't have 3D Builder, uh, it's a free software that comes with most Windows 10 machines or, or above, I believe. And if it doesn't come with your machine, you can just uh, right click on the file you download, open with, and then here you can search the Microsoft Store and it should be like one of the first ones uh, that appear on the list. Um, let me just extend the window here. Yeah, it's the third one here, 3D Builder uh, and it's uh, free. Yeah. So download this. I believe this is even available to like Surface, uh, Microsoft Surface, like their tablet products and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. Now the reason I wanted to use this or make this compatible with 3D Builder is because I wanted something very basic, easy to use, and uh, simple. So you don't have to download any, you know, more complex 3D modeling softwares. However, this can be done in Blender as well, and I'll show you how to do that in the second part of this video. So once you open the object in 3D Builder, here you can see the, um, the first, the Skeleton Bowman 1 in this pose. And basically all the parts are, or not all the parts, but most of the parts are separated, allowing you to sort of uh, pick and choose what you want to include. So for example, if you don't want the helmet, you can click on it. Eh. If you can't click on it on, on the actual model because something's in the way, you can just select it from the list here on the right. Um, there it is. So here, uh, I select the helmet, I can delete that, and I can select the collar, I can delete that. So now it's just uh, wearing a hood. And then let's say I don't want it to have the quiver on, and I want it to be pantsless, right? So here's one sort of variation of this mini that I can make. What I do now is I can just click on the top left here, save as, and save as an STL file. So here I'll just name it Skeleton Bowman 1A and I'll save. And then you'll get this prompt telling you that you should uh, save in a different format for compatibility reasons, but you could just ignore this, click continue. And then now when I open the STL file that we just created, uh, for me it'll open Cheetubox, which is my preferred uh, um, slicing software. Uh, Oh, <laughs> the screen just went black. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and yeah, here it is, the final STL file uh, with the 
options that we chose to delete, delete it. So now this is one variant of this skeleton Bowman one. And now simply creating another variant, I'll just uh, minimize this window. I'll open the skeleton Bowman one again, and I'll this time I'll you know I'll I'll keep the quiver. I'll delete like a boot and maybe um, delete the hood and the vest. Let's say, and maybe both the sleeves. Let's make it sleeveless. So now here, same thing, just on the top left, save as STL format, and then I'll call this one Skeleton Bowman 1B, save, and yeah. So basically, now when we open the G2 box file again, okay, the screen went black again, <laughs> I can open the file, We'll load in skeleton 1B, and now you can see we've got two different minis. Um, and yeah, that's uh, as simple as that. Now, one thing to note, these are made up of uh, several sort of intersecting objects. So uh, be aware that you can't use the hollow function on these models uh, because it will try hollow each individual object separately and it'll create a ton of voids. Uh, as it is, it will print just fine because I've made sure that all the objects are intersecting you know, properly. So as a whole, it is watertight, but clicking the hollow function uh, here uh, will sort of ruin that. Um, there is something you can do in 3D Builder uh, f that will uh, that will uh, merge everything together here in edit mode. You can uh, click merge. So if I select select all here on the right and hit merge, it will merge all these objects together and sort of make one s single shape that you can actually hollow. Uh, but the problem with this function is uh, it sort of uh, degrades the quality of the surface of the model. Um, it will, um, you know, you know, maybe you can't really see it here, uh, but I'll export it and just show you the difference. So I'll save this as an STL and call this 1A merged. So I'll open this again. Oop. Wow, every time I click on Cheat 2 Box, the screen goes black for a second. <laughs> uh, open file. So here's the merged one. And as you can see, compared to the unmerged one, it's it's a little bit more, um, you can see the surface is just a little bit more, uh, what's it called? Less detailed. But you know, in the context of a tabletop miniature, this will probably not be very noticeable. And the thing, the difference between these two shapes, or these two models is, one is a completely solid object. Uh, if you wish to hollow, you could. However, um, I don't recommend hollowing these models as they're quite thin and brittle in some areas, you know, being skeletons and all. And tabletop miniatures, usually I, I never hollow them anyway. So yeah, that's just a note about that. So yeah, that's how you do that with 3D Builder. And now I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing with uh, Blender. So it's very simple. Um, I'm just going to delete these STL files that we made. I'm going to open up Blender. Uh, so there's only one little quirk here that you need to think about when using Blender. Because I, I exported these models for um, 3D Builder in particular, the scaling is kind of off. So when you open a new Blender file, I like to just delete everything. And now we go to File, Import, uh, GLTF, GLB slash GLTF, this one here and then just select the um, the file that you downloaded, Skeleton Bowman 1, import, and as you can see, it's very small. So here's the, the scaling issue I talked about. So you can remedy this in a couple different ways. Either you set the scene scale of Blender to be a thousand times more than what it is, or you could just scale the whole model up a thousand, which, um, you know, either way is fine. So press S to scale, and then type 1000, shift C, and yeah, 
here it is, Skeleton Bowman 1. Um, and here on the in Blender on the top right, you can click on Viewport Shading. Uh, because in Blender it shows the sort of vertex colors that I added to the model, uh, but I couldn't get this to show in 3D Builder, which is a shame because it does make things a lot easier to see. Um, and yeah, unlike 3D Builder, however, you don't have to delete the objects you don't want to be seen. It's just a matter of like clicking the eyeball here to hide what you don't want to be there. So here I'm clicking hood. Um, Let's make this one uh, sleeveless, but with a vest, and get rid of the boot. Something like this. Um, and yeah, so if you, through Blender, it's just press A on your keyboard to select all the visible parts. File, export, STL, and then here just check uh, selection only so it doesn't export the um, the hidden objects and yeah so just give it a name skeleton bowman 1 a yep export STL and now should be here open in sheet box and there it is um, and yeah, screen goes black again. <laughs> okay, and uh, yeah, there it is. Same note about the um, separated objects, so this can't be hollowed either. Um, in Blender, you can do a remesh or or or, or uh, what's it called? Um, this one. Um, yeah, a remesh. Uh, you can do this function to merge all the objects together. Just join them into one uh, single object by uh, selecting everything, pressing Control J on your keyboard. So now it's all one uh, object, and then you can go into the sculpting mode and and remesh them all into one part, uh, and it'll be one object as well. So there, yeah, that's a quick video about these uh, uh, GLB files. Um, let me know if you find these to be useful and I'll do more of it. Like I said, this is going to be a pretty basic example with these Bowman. Uh, the different uh, files here are basically just different poses of, of the same model. Um, so I'll show you just a couple here. This is uh, Skeleton Bowman 2, just a more relaxed pose. Um, Oh yeah, another thing, a quick note about this error that you get here. Uh, clicking it is fine, but if you click it and save the file, it won't be able to open in Blender for some reason. Uh, so I've just been ignoring it and I've not run into any issues, but if you feel like you need to, then feel free to click this repair button. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so there's uh, Skeleton Bowman 2. Number three is just sort of, you know, on guard. So yeah, they're just in different poses. But this could be applied in several different ways, like I mentioned, you know, giving you the options to choose different weapons and stuff. And also, like within 3D Builder, there are some opportunities to sort of change the position of things. So let's say there was a hand with a um, sword in it that you wanted to rotate. You can, uh, you can select it. You can click the rotate thing here on the, on the bottom. And then you can select you can like rotate the different objects uh, around a pivot point and play around with it. You know, you can have a little slanted sort of helmet <laughs> or, or a sword in a different position, stuff like that. You could really play around with, you know, customizing it. So this is just sort of a, a simpler way rather than having to do it all from scratch with the uh, blend files and the blend rigs. Uh, I'll also provide the blend files for this uh, for this uh, skeleton miniature. I'll show it to you here. Um, but the problem is like, uh, there's a lot of extra work that needs to be done with, for example, the clothing, uh, you know, cause here, even after like, here's the skeleton Bowman rig, you, s you select the poses that I've like pre-made, uh, which are included like as the um, sort of different poses. 
but there's a lot of extra work that needs to be done with the clothing. Like it's all the um, all the folds and damage that are in the final models are hand sculpted in. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's a way to like rig it properly or rig clothing properly to make it work a little nicer. But but the solution I found is to just uh, is to sort of hand sculpt the the uh, the final one. Uh, which, you know, this file is available for those of you with the know-how or the time or the ability to do so, but I thought that the, um, these sort of GLB files with the, with the, um, with the different options could be a, a good sort of middle ground to give you, uh, uh, customizability within sort of, uh, the digital realm, uh, so that you could print out the final objects that you want. And yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, let me know did you find this uh, do you find these files to be you know a benefit should I keep doing them or is it just a waste of time <laughs> okay thanks and uh, have a nice day